Hello, and welcome to the dungeon. I'm your host, Rob. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Tempest Domain Cleric. And I know a couple of videos ago, I said it was going to be Light Domain, but then I realized I've already done Light Domain. And we haven't done Tempest yet, and they've been around forever. The, one of the original players' handbook uh, domains for clerics, and I still haven't done it. So, you know, before we start redoing some, let's at least finish the stuff we haven't done at all yet. And I do think that... Um, Tempest Domain is an interesting comparison to the Light Domain Cleric in some ways. Because, honestly, if you want to play a Cleric who could also blast, Light Cleric is still probably your best choice. But Tempest is probably the number two pick and also offers some other, you know, some other trade-offs. So, you know, I think it's a pretty decent choice. Also, um, in the, the campaign I'm currently playing in, we're doing a Descent to Avernus campaign. I'm not running it, I'm just, I'm a player. But one of the other players is playing a Tempest Domain Cleric. So it's given me a chance to see him in action and get a judge of how it's going. We also have a Twilight Domain Cleric in that campaign. Uh, so with two clerics, you'd think that healing would never be an issue. You would think. But, uh, yeah. Anyways. Back to the Tempest Domain. If you've ever wanted to play Thor, then this is probably your best chance. Or actually even Iron Man, because your level 17 ability lets you fly around. And you could be wearing full plate mail in the, with this subclass. So actually half the Avengers are pretty much covered by this one subclass here. Anyways, let's start with the Tempest Domain spell list. So at first level, we're going to get Fog Cloud and Thunder Wave. Uh, I quite like both of these spells. Fog Cloud is an excellent low-level battlefield spell. You can obscure stuff. You can, you know, deny people like line of sight for spell casting and stuff. It's pretty good for a first level spell. And Thunder Wave is actually a pretty decent AoE spell for first level as well. There's not a lot of good AoE spell options. And, you know, you don't have Burning Hands, right, on your spell list as a cleric. So, and personally, I think Thunder Wave might be even better anyways. And, uh, you know, so as a first level spell, it's pretty decent. Third level, we get Gust of Wind and Shatter. I'm probably less impressed with those, but whatever. Uh, fifth level, we get Call Lightning and Sleet Storm. Call Lightning is a nice addition, obviously thematic to the subclass. And it's some pretty decent damage because it's a persistent effect and you can hit guys every round with it. It actually is a pretty good blasting type spell. Oh, excuse me, blasting type spell. It does have some weaknesses, like you, you know, kind of need to be outdoors and stuff like that. And and it does compete with Spirit Guardians, which does kind of similar damage, but is often better. However, I do think that because of your domain abilities to, you know, increase the damage from your lightning spells and whatnot, I think that this could be a better choice in many situations. Uh, just for this subclass, not necessarily overall. Level 7, we get Control Water and Ice Storm. Again, um, Control Water has some useful effects. I think it, I feel like it's a third and a half level spell. Like it's a little good to be a third level spell and probably not quite good enough to be a fourth. But like the Flood Effect, the Whirlpool Effect, or, you know, uh, they can both be pretty handy depending on the circumstances. This is one of those spells that I almost never see cast in a campaign, but when it is cast, it's usually very, very effective. So, you know, could be worse. Ice Storm, of course, getting a bit of damage and adding some battlefield control as well. Not bad. I like the fact that this spell list brings a lot of things from outside the cleric list. A lot of times, as a cleric, you're getting domain spells that are already on your spell list. And yeah, it's nice that you don't have to now prepare them and that you can dig a little deeper into your spell list and prepare other stuff that maybe you wouldn't normally be able to take. So I do like that. Um, but I even like more when I just get spells that I normally couldn't even get at all. So I do appreciate that about the Tempest Domain spell list. At uh, ninth level, we get Destructive Wave and Insect Plague. I don't really know why Insect Plague is on the spell list. Uh, insect Plague is a fine spell. I'm not complaining about Insect Plague at all. I'm just saying that everything else is like thunder or water kind of stuff. And I don't know. This doesn't really fit either of those themes. But whatever, you know. It's there. It's a good spell, so who, who cares? 
Anyways, moving on to the actual class abilities. So right at first level, we're going to get bonus proficiencies with martial weapons and heavy armor. Pretty awesome. I mean, heavy armor gives us our best options. And martial weapons are the best weapons in the game. So can't go wrong with either of those. And we get them both. We also get Wrath of the Storm. Uh, you can thunderously rebuke attackers when a creature within five feet of you that you can see hits you with an attack. You can use your reaction to cause the creature to make a dexterity saving throw. The creature takes 2 die 8 lightning or thunder damage, your choice, on a failed saving throw and half as much on a successful save. You can use this feature a number of times, equal to your wisdom modifier, minimum of once, and you gain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Uh, this ability is actually really nice at like first or second level. The problem with it is it does not scale at all. And you could do things like use your channel divinity to get a level two to do maximum damage with it, um, you know. And even at higher levels, I mean, you might not have a lot of other things you're going to do with your reaction as a cleric. So at least you have something you can do with your reaction. You can deal some damage back. Uh, but the problem is the damage isn't great at mid levels and is obviously even worse at high levels. But, you know, a lot of times you don't have anything to do with the reaction as a cleric, so I'll take it. And like I said, it is quite strong at low levels. Uh, just no scaling. <laughs> uh, Channel Divinity, Destructive Wave, or Destructive Wrath, sorry. Starting at second level, you can use your Channel Divinity to wield the power of the storm with unchecked ferocity. When you roll lightning or thunder damage, you can use your Channel Divinity to deal maximum damage instead of rolling. I do like this ability. The problem is that you don't really have a lot of like high damage spells as a cleric. Yes, you get some on your spell list as a Tempest cleric, but things like Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning would have been really nice to have. And of course, you don't have either one of those. Now, granted, you could go with like, say, uh, Blue Dragon Ancestry Sorcerer and multi-class just two levels of cleric just for this ability. But it's not like that's free, and uh, you know now you're needing wisdom and charisma. I don't necessarily know that it's a great idea, but if you really want to just go all in on thunder damage, it could be worse. But um, this is a cleric video, not a sorcerer video, so I just thought I'd mention that, but we won't spend a lot of time on it. Uh, I do think that there is some potential here, though, especially if you wanted to upcast some sort of a spell then, you know, automatically doing maximum damage is quite nice. So, you know, not bad. Not great, not bad. Ah, I'd say it's, it's decent, it's pretty good. Level six, we get Thunderbolt Strike. So when you deal lightning damage, I wish it was lightning or thunder, especially since it's called Thunderbolt Strike. But when you deal lightning damage to a large or smaller creature, you can also push it up to 10 feet away from you. This is pretty good. Uh, it was even better when there was like less force movement options in the game. I mean, it really used to be like this, repelling blast, a couple specific spells, you know. But it is pretty good even still with other options. And, you know, I kind of like it. You're probably going to be dealing lightning damage fairly often. It does mean that um, if you're going to be using your Wrath of the Storm ability to like push something back when it hits you, you are limited to doing only lightning damage, whereas that ability allows you to do lightning or thunder. But, you know, still okay. It doesn't require like a reaction or anything else like that, so that at least is nice. It's just anytime you deal damage, you can just push them back. At level eight, we get Divine Strike. Uh, so once on each of our turns, when we hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can cause attack to deal 1 die 8 thunder damage to the target. See, again, I wish that was the same as our thunderbolt strike damage, which requires us to do lightning. <laughs> uh, but whatever. Uh, when you hit 14th level, the extra damage increases to 2 die 8. But yeah, if you could, like, hit somebody with your hammer and then deal extra damage, which you could then use to push them back, that would have even more class synergy. I really, really don't know why they didn't allow you to like choose back and forth between them or just pick one all the way through. At least then, if it was the same damage type, then you could combine some of these abilities for even better effect. 
So it's not that these abilities are bad on their own, it's just they could have been even better if they would have, like, you know, built on each other, right? Um, also, you know, it's worth mentioning that most, well, pretty much every cleric actually either gets extra cantrip damage or gets extra weapon damage. You're in the weapon camp, which is fine because you've got choice of any weapon you want, right? So that's okay. Then we don't get any new class abilities until 17th level. So from 8th to 17th, it's just the base cleric stuff. At 17, we get Stormborn. You have flying speed equal to your current walking speed whenever you are not underground or indoors. So like I said, this is really going to complete the whole Thor mo motif, or possibly Iron Man, but Thor is clearly the better fit. And uh, as long as you're not indoors or underground, you can just fly. Not limited number of times, not, you know, for a limited amount of time or anything like that. You just can always fly whenever you feel like it, if you're not indoors or underground. And that's actually really, really nice too. So when I look at the Tempest domain overall, I feel like it's still a pretty decent domain. Um, obviously the more like books we get, the more we start to see like this power creep enter into the game. And we have a lot of cleric options these days. But I do really like a lot of the themes and the ideas of the Tempest domain. I like the fact that um, you know, we get a lot of spells from outside the cleric spell list. I think that the abilities themselves are actually pretty decent for the most part. And yes, I wish our level 1 ability scaled at least somewhat. That's unfortunate. But like I said, you know, you might not have anything else to do with your reaction anyway. So just having that option is still better than nothing. It's not like, you know, invoke duplicity or something at least, you know, where it's requiring concentration. And now it's competing with like all of our other spells. Especially as a trickery domain cleric, you've got an excellent spell list with things like Polymorph on there and Pass Without Trace, you know? The last thing you need to do is have your, uh, one of your class, like, core features conflicting with that. At least this one, you know, with Tempest, that's not really an issue. But uh, like I said, I do wish there was a little better synergy between, like, say, your, your melee attacks and then being able to push things back with the lightning damage. But because it's thunder on one and lightning on the other, uh, you know, I, I don't know why they did that. Maybe they thought it would be too powerful if you could just push guys around once per round. But who knows, right? Um, either way, though, I still think it's a really fun subclass. I said my friend Mike's been having a great time with his cleric. He's been very, very effective. So, uh, you know, at dealing damage, of course, not at healing. Uh, why would he do that? Uh, but very effective overall. And like, if you're looking for an alternative to the Light Cleric, or maybe you just want to be able to be a little more versatile, where you've got some battlefield control with the subclass, you've got some damage spells with the subclass, but you still have all the Cleric buffs and heals and stuff like that. You have things like Spirit Guardians, you have spiritual weapons still, you know? But now you can add in things like Call Lightning on top of that, right? And I think that that's a pretty interesting way to build character. And you've also got some better defensive options than the Light Cleric. Like, so the Light Cleric would still probably beat you offensively because things like Fireball are great. <laughs> but you're much stronger defensively with better armor choices and with a wider range of weapon choices. So I do think that overall it's a pretty decent um, comparison between those two. You know, like I said, one's slightly better offensively, the other's better defensively. But both of them are like pretty nice subclasses with, with a varied and diverse spell list. And I think that the Tempest domain actually probably has the better spell list between the two. I don't necessarily um, love a lot of direct damage spells as I level up. They, they tend to be really good when you first get them and then just not scale particularly well, right? So I think that having things like Fog Cloud, like even at higher levels, Fog Cloud can still be useful, right? Whereas, uh, you know, some spells like Thunder Wave may not be so useful once you're like level 10 or 12 or whatever, right? But, you know, whatever. So, anyways, those are my thoughts on the subclass overall. I think that it looks pretty fun. I know Mike's been having a great time playing it. And uh, I think it still holds up fairly well, even against a lot of the newer subclasses. So, you know, that's that's uh, worth mentioning as well. Anyways, those are my thoughts on this class. Um, 
Thank you for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell for notifications. And most importantly, if you've played or want to play this class or have some interesting multi-class ideas, maybe you've tried it with the with the sorcerer before. Maybe you want like uh, with the like I said with the dragon ancestor. Maybe you want Stormborn or something like that. Or you've multi-class with wizard and use chain lightning and did maximum damage on your chain lightning and have a cool story to tell about it. I'd love to hear that kind of stuff. So anyways, that's everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.